class 9 as we were reading this chapter the last minute so we have read that the young girl johnson she has realized her mistake she came to know that it was really wrong on her part to look at only the falling leaves of the ivy paper and to read and to relate her life with it she came to know that it is very nonsensical okay to to uh, to you can say attach your life to the falling of leaves so finally what happened let us read from here johnsy did not say anything she went and brought her a ball of fruit now johnsy who is a good friend okay she is not a fair weather friend you know what is the meaning of fair weather friends fair weather friends yes what is its meaning fair weather friends yes we are Yes, dear. What is the meaning of fair weather friends? A friend who befriends you, uh, for uh, when you are in a good condition, but yes. leaves your side when yes, when in a difficult situation. When you are in difficult condition or difficult situation, yes, it's called as fair weather friend. So she was not fair weather friend. She was a good friend as a friend. He is a friend indeed. So I don't want any soup, Johnsy said. I'm not hungry. Now there are only four leaves left. So this we have done. This we have read. We have to read it from here. So Sue hugged Johnsy. Then she gave her lots of hot soup and a mirror. Johnsy combed her hair and smiled brightly. So now uh, her friend John uh, Sue, she has given her soup. She ate that soup. She combed her hair as she has earlier lost all the hope to live her life, right? But now she revived her, uh, revived herself again, and she combed her hair. Now in the afternoon, the doctor came. After examining his patient, he told Sue, Johnsy, now has the will to live. I am confident she will recover soon. Now I must go downstairs and see Ben. He is also suffering from pneumonia, but I am afraid there is no hope for him. So now in the doctor, in the afternoon, doctor came. He examined Johnsy. He found some symptoms of you can say better man, and she is recovering. And she told you that now I am sure that she will definitely recover as she is recovering. So now he said, but before leaving your flat, I must go downstairs to see Bearman. Surprise, Bearman? Yes, he told. Yes, Bearman. Bearman, the old painter. He is also suffering from pneumonia. So this really made Sue worry. The next morning, Sue came up and sat on Johnson's bed. Taking Johnson's hand in hers, she said, "I have something to tell you. Mr. Bearman died of pneumonia." This morning he was ill for only two days. The first day, the janitor found him on his bed. Janitor means the caretaker of the house, maybe. Okay. And his clothes and shoes were wet, and he was shivering. He had been out in that stormy night. Yes. So the next morning, Batman was dead. She came to Johnsy, took her hand in hers, and told her the reality. She said that Johnsy, you know that Batman is dead. Johnsy was surprised. Batman is dead. How he is dead? She told her that he died of pneumonia. He was suffering from pneumonia for only two days, and it is just because of that short-term illness only he died. Actually, she said that the janitor has found that he was lying dead on his bed, and he told that his clothes were completely wet because. In that stormy night, he was he was completely drenched in rain. He remained outside. No. Then they found the letter and the lantern still lighted, still lighted and lying near his bed. And what they found? They found the letter which he used to fix it to the wall so that he could climb near that ivy ivy tree so that in order to fix the last leaf that was about to fall. And there was a lantern still lighting near his bed. There were also some brushes. Yellow. He 
feet on the floor near the ladder. So what he has also found, he has also found, he has also found that some green and yellow colored paint was also lying on the floor near the ladder. Then they came to know that it was not the actual leaf that was stuck to the stuck to ivy paper, but actually it was the painted leaf that Darwin has painted by wetting himself throughout the night in the in the stormy night in the rain. John C. Deer, Sue said, look out of the window. Look at that ivy leaf. Haven't you wondered why it doesn't flutter? When the wind blows, that's Darwin's masterpiece. He painted in the night in the last year. So now, then Sue told John C. John C. Please notice that leaf. John C. looked at the leaf. Then Sue told John C. Have you noticed that why this last leaf did not go on? Actually, it was Batman's masterpiece. As he has shifted it, and this was the artificial leaf. It was fixed to this ivy paper. The actual leaf had fallen long before it was ordered. Never finish hope, always help others, have soft corners for corner for others, believe in humanity. So many lessons are being learned from this story. Very really, I think that even this story is a masterpiece, which I don't think so that it has ever been such great amount of huge amount of goodness. Like so perfectly written that not even not even you can say um implementing attitude very beautiful very accurate written. every word that is your heart and finally the end see that I'm telling I'm telling you to write on story and always telling you to write in this manner so that you will both find trust of the reader see the unexpected end we have never expected this kind of end. How the story is in this us with its words till the end. We all next, next, we want to know yes, what will happen, what will happen, what will happen. What will happen. That happens in the very beautiful, very beautiful story. One of the greatest stories I have ever So now, coming up with the question answers. What is John C's illness? In what can you hurt her memory on the witness to the HPS? Ask her which she is. John C was a young artist. He was suffering from pneumonia. Uh, uh, she, uh, the medicines she was taking had no side effects as she was not having any hope to live. So uh, her willingness, uh, so uh, when she will have a hope to live, then she will be cured. Yes. So, uh, first, uh, feeling of pessimism in her life. Okay, she thought that she would die when the last leaf on the ivy paper would fall down. Actually, this was of course nonsensical. Okay, this was of course nonsensical on her part as she has related her life with that of an ivy paper. What can cure her? To such kind of patient, patient, nothing can cure, uh, nothing can cure such kind of patient except his firm belief in herself or his firm belief is in in himself, and this is what actually John C is requiring. John C also requires this sense of optimism, which which has also you can say dampened her enthusiasm for life. This kind of you can say this kind of positivity is required on her part that should take her out of you can say out of her depression, so that she should not relate her life with that of an IV creeper. Okay. And there is no medicine. Even the doctor was hopeless to cure her because even the medicines were not working. And to such patients, only the will to live. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now, question number 
Next one is you think the feeling of depression John C has is common among teenagers. Now you people will tell me. Yes. Yes, the feeling of depression. Yes, the feeling of depression John C has is common among teenagers. It is so because like John C, they too lack emotional maturity. They fail to understand that sorrows are much as a part of our lives as joys are. Certain situations in life are unpredictable as well as unavoidable. Teenagers become nervous while encountering such situations. They begin to gather negative thoughts and have a fear of failures. It becomes a cycle and their weak health aggravates emotional instability. Uh, this is not even... um, can I speak also? Life has two aspects that is positive and negative. It depends upon how we take it. Nowadays, it is very common that teenagers are getting depressed because of uh, cutthroat competition. Uh, it is very common. Uh, the feeling of depression that John C. had is common among teenagers. They get tense and depressed because of various factors. Studies not scoring well in the examinations, expectations of parents and peer pressure are some of the factors that have led to the growing problem of depression among teenagers. So, what kind of you people will better know about the situation that teenagers are suffering from this kind of situation? The one and the foremost reason is the cultural competition, as the population of the country is growing and spreading very fast. Moreover, there are limited job offers. They are always burdened up. It is not only due to this, but there is a competition that is that is tricky their life, but ultimately it is the expectations of the society also, right? Society is also expecting a lot from them. Moreover, the expectations of the parents, society, as well as the family, is one of the another factor that is putting these teenagers into this, into this kind of you can say uh, depression, right? Moreover, uh, moreover. With the development, okay, moreover, with the development also and with the, you know, the rising of the standards of life, everyone's expectations from himself, from oneself is also rising. Okay, earlier you can say if we look some 20 to 25 years behind, okay, so means like you can say earning a handsome salary was the sole motive, okay, but now these days there are so many you can say luxuries that everyone thought that this is my right and everyone thought that this is the only way to live okay moreover our you can say our you can say diversion from from simplicity is also one of the reason for this kind of depression because we are forgetting the life of simplicity and we are attracted towards you can say so we are attracted towards you can say um, glitzy world we are always attracted towards the shiny world we always want it to be in limelight Okay, so for this reason, people are so active on social media that sometimes they are spending a lot in order to please others. But actually, we are forgetting the fact that we don't have a we don't have a community to please, but we have a family to teach. Okay, so actually, you can say our you can say our beliefs. Okay, how to live life. Okay, and what is what are the actual way of living life is little bit you can say diverted from its actual living. So these are some of the reasons why teenagers are also burdened up under this kind of pressure and they are also suffering from a lot of pressure in their lives. <coughs> okay, so in this way, elders, education, these kind of books, okay, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> books as well as these kind of stories as which are imparting good moral values to the students, they are very much necessary only by getting values from these kind of stories only by getting you can say, education from these kind of stories, they will actually come to know that life is not only a, it's a showbiz. Okay? It is, life is only a work to live. Okay? Live your life, be satisfied, be contented 
and you should be satisfied with yourself when you come to know when you realize this secret of life your life will be healthier healthier one devoid of all luxuries no doubt that luxuries are a part and parcel of life <coughs> we actually need them okay but they should not master you they should not rule you okay so this is another one you can say lesson that we have learned from this chapter as i told you that so many lessons so many moral values are embedded in this story see now you can imagine now you can imagine the level of thinking of the writer okay so this is what the writer is depicting about himself in his stories right so barman has a dream what is it and does it come true what of that what was that man yes priya let me unmute you the count answer what was that man was it what was it and does it come true fairman was a 60 year old painter uh, he lived in the same building as susan and johnsy and lived on the ground floor his lifelong dream was to paint a masterpiece uh, uh his lifelong dream was to paint a ma masterpiece he wanted his uh, mas he wanted his artistic work to be remembered forever and used as a piece of uh, reference for other artists but uh, it had remained a dream, a dream until he had painted a la the last leaf on the creeper uh, it is con it in my opinion it will be considered a masterpiece because uh, it had saved so uh, johnsy's life and uh, he not only did he say, uh, not only his artistic work, work saved his her life but he had sacrificed his life in painting that masterpiece what was that masterpiece bernard who was a 60 year old painter he was living in the same flat here johnsy and he was living on the ground floor of the same house in which he and johnsy were sharing a flat okay he was quite a good person at his heart he has sacrificed his life to save johnsy's life who has developed nonsensical notion towards life that whenever the last creeper or sorry whenever the last leaf on the ivy creeper would fall that would be the last day of her life and bellman's strong desire was to paint a masterpiece he wanted to paint a masterpiece but his desire had not come to come uh, but his but his desire did not took any concrete form or it has not come to till he was alive okay but the last but his last work of art that must that i will keep uh, that leaf of the ivy keeper that he has painted when it was attached to the leaf uh, sorry when it was attached to the keeper and with a strong wind it did not fall down this was his actually actual masterpiece and why is it considered as a masterpiece it is considered as a masterpiece because because a work of art which is remembered for generations for its greatness is actually we call a masterpiece which is a source of you can say motivation which is a source of you can say learning for all okay this we call masterpiece and bernman's the leaf painted by bernman of course it was a masterpiece because it it has left impression of learning for all the persons in life okay so it has left a lot for the people to learn that it is only your service towards others will ultimately help a person who will ultimately help a person to come out as a good one okay so and this has happened in case of bernman so bernman's desire strong desire to paint a masterpiece of course it came true but when it came true at the cost that okay What is Bergman's masterpiece? What makes you say so? Now you will speak about this. What was Bergman's masterpiece? And I will listen from all my good students. Let me see what good uh, explanation they have come out with. Okay. <coughs> yes. May I? Okay. Okay. Turn wise. Who will speak first? Ma'am, may I? Yes, please. Bergman's masterpiece was the painting of the leaf. It was the last leaf on the creeper. Sue told Johnsy that Behrman had died of pneumonia. He was ill for only two days. The first day, the janitor had found him on his bed. His clothes and shoes were wet, and he was shivering. He had been out in that stormy night. 
They found a letter and a lantern still lighted lying, uh, lying near his bed. There were also some brushes and green and yellow paints on the floor near the letter. Sue asked Johnsey to look out of the window at the ivy leaf, which was the last remaining leaf on the creeper. She asked her if she did not wonder why it did not flutter when the wind blew. It was so because that the last leaf was Behrman's masterpiece. He painted it the last night when the last leaf fell. His masterpiece had given the strength to Johnsey to come out of her illness. Behrman's masterpiece saved her life but took his own. Very good. Very good. Absolutely right. Next one. P.S. Who will speak now? Uh, John C. had said that she would die when the last leaf on the ivy, ivy creeper falls. When Behrman heard this from Sue, he, see, uh, he was uh, utterly disappointed in uh, John C. And uh, he secret, eventually he secretly painted a leaf on the creeper when the, when the last leaf had fallen. Unaware that the leaf that John C. was looking at was a painting, John C. felt motivated to live mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it uh, felt motivated to live, uh, live seeing that the last leaf was still clinging to the creeper even uh, mm -hmm. though the weather was bad and uh, strong winds were, were blowing. She felt energetic and developed the willingness to live. Mm -hmm. Thus, the last leaf painted by, the, painted by Beherman was a masterpiece. It rekindled John C.'s will willingness to fight her illness and live. Very that is the reason why Sue says that the last leaf uh, is a Behrman's masterpiece. It was Behrman's masterpiece, right? Absolutely right. Very good. So, Ashmi, do you want to say something? Yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> Behrman was a old artist. To paint the masterpiece. His painting of an ivy leaf was his masterpiece, which saved the life of John C., it was such a painting that it was not easy to make out of whether the leaf was real or it was just a painting. Mm -hmm. When Behrman died, his life saving painting uh, was called by Shu as a masterpiece. Yes, of course it is a masterpiece. I have explained you a number of times that why it is called as a masterpiece. What is a masterpiece that evokes inspiration for generations to come, for the next generation, for the other people? It's the source of learning. It's the source of motivation for others. Of course, that small leaf painted by a bad man was, of course, a masterpiece because it has saved Johnson's life. Means no other masterpiece ever in the world has served such kind of, you can say, it has ever done this kind of service that it saved somebody's life. And this is, of course, a masterpiece because this is, of course, a motivation. Of course, this is a source of motivation for all the persons. He, he was imbibed, he, it rekindled in, him, in her the desire to live. It, re, it changed her mind, her nonsensical notion that she is going to die when the last leaf on this ivy paper would fall. It has altogether came to an end. No other medication of the world was able to save her. But ultimately what it was, it was only that I, small leaf painted by Behrman that saved her life. Okay, ultimately, although Behrman suffered a lot, he drenched himself in the rain. He, was, he, he died of pneumonia, but ultimately the great work of art, a small leaf painted by him, it has long lasted, uh, long lasting impression upon her life. And that's his, this is the reason why it is called as masterpiece. Okay. So next is the gift of Maggie. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Have you ever felt depressed and rejected? How did you overcome such feelings? I'm not going to ask. This is something personal. So you can just analyze yourself just in your mind. Just you can say, just have this kind of, you can say, question to yourself when I was most depressed and how I came out of that depression so that you can find first. The thing is that only that you should be a source of motivation for others. If you want to talk about it, then you are most welcome to speak about it. Okay. Sometimes because your personal experiences, they are always a source of motivation for others. Because when others are suffering from the same kind of problem, the person feels that if I will talk about this, maybe the other person will get motivation and ultimately this comes out to be a source of motivation for others. Okay. So the next one, yes, the gift of Maggie. Who has read it? Anybody has read that story? The gift of the Maggie. Now in the next class, I'm going to ask you about this, the gift of Maggie. You must have remembered long-haired girl who has sold it. 
to get a golden wrist watch for her husband and the husband who was owning owing, uh, who had that you can say uh, this you can say golden watch he has sold that golden watch okay in order to get get a beautiful you can say pair of combs made up of ivory for her for his wife and ultimately their eternal love for each other okay she sold her beautiful possession of long hair for beautiful for purchasing beautiful gold chain for the beautiful watch that his husband has her husband has and the husband has sold that beautiful possession of that watch for purchasing those combs again it is a great expression of selfless love for each other that is really very beautiful story i think so that the old stories which have been produced they are of course great source of inspiration okay dusk by saki even i have not read it i will try chicken soup for the teenage soul on tough stuff it was compiled and edited by jack and pitch so try to read it and we will share it in our class okay whenever we will get time okay so we have discussed the main questions of this chapter okay uh, and in the next class we are going to discuss some extra questions for this chapter also right because i think without discussion of extra questions the chapter is not complete okay because you will get more ideas more you can say words to write down okay so have a great day for you all and with this we are going to uh come to an end but before that if you want to say anything you are most welcome you can ask your doubts